here we go. Alright, first things first, Gravity Falls is a great show. I fell in love with it in early high school when it was first airing, and as a result was forced to watch the whole show in the proper order without binging the entire thing in a week, as is my usual method. So I think I speak from a position of authority on Gravity Falls pacing. And all I have to say about the pacing is, well, it's pretty great for a season. Look, it hurts me as much to say this as it hurts you, but Gravity Falls pacing really falls to shit once Ford is introduced. I mean, you're talking about 30, count them, 30 episodes of build-up to Not What He Seems, with a measly 9 episodes before the show ended. Considering that the finale was a three-parter and Centurion Candidate and Roadside Attraction barely, if at all, even featured Ford as a character, that means we had four episodes to flesh out his character, which is a pathetic tenth of the entire series' length. Think about this. Ford is meant to be a parallel to Dipper and Mabel's relationship, being Stan's other half and eventually completing Stan's character arc, as well as the twins' arc about the future of their relationship, and we have four episodes to get to know him! Four episodes that he's already sharing with the expansive cast, and then the finale to actually wrap up that arc. It's not enough. Some might claim that Not What He Seems should have been placed earlier in the series, perhaps as the season one finale, but honestly, I think that would be doing the series a disservice. The build-up to Not What He Seems is masterful, beginning at season one, episode one, and following all the way through to season two, where it all comes together for the grand reveal, which is great because the grand reveal isn't even all that inspired, something that the show itself pokes fun at. <laughs> But how is that a positive, I hear you ask, in that voice, for some reason. Not what he seems ain't about the literal plot. It's about character, world building, suspense. There was no reveal that could be shocking enough to warrant the 30 episodes of build-up to an audience as jaded as we are, so the reveal itself takes a backseat to the implications on the characters of said reveal. The long-lost brother trope is an ancient one, to be sure, but using that trope to throw into question Stan's entire relationship with Dipper and Mabel and threatening to tear the entire family apart? Inspired. So, I ask, after this absolute joy of an episode, what in the hell happened? Gravity Falls has always been able to balance episodic storytelling with a serial-style grand plot living in the background, but after episode 30, the plot grinds to a screeching halt before floundering back to life in episode 37. None of the episodes before that advance the actual storyline or threaten to, aside from a quick bout of Bilk's position with Ford. Trademarked. And speaking of Bill, what's up with him anyway? That's the question that everyone in the audience was asking after Dreamscapers. He's such a unique, captivating character concept that everyone immediately wanted to know more about him. But he worked because he was a slow burn. Finding out what Bill's plan is, how the little clues sprinkled throughout the series factor in, and especially what his relationship with Ford was actually about was a plot worthy of a season of its own, but after the near-perfect pacing up until Not What He Seems, his plan comes to a jarring fruition and he gets his weird Mageddon. Thing is, one of the things that makes Bill a great villain is his utter scale compared to Gravity Falls, both physical might and in personality. Gravity Falls is a show about a small town in Oregon where you might find a Sasquatch or the Mothman, not an invincible triangle demon with completely transparent sights for world domination. He's uniquely alien to the setting, which is very much what the show is focused on, and that makes him a threat to everything the characters and the viewers hold dear. Seeing Lazy Susan get turned to stone is so much worse than seeing some random candy set as an adventure time get hurt because so much of our time was spent getting to know her as a person. That is Gravity Falls' major strength. So with all that in mind, Bill needed more time to cook. He needed more time for Ford to deliver important exposition, to claw his way back to power, to take away parts of the setting everyone loves so much, so his eventual rise to power and downfall would be that much sweeter. Imagine, for a minute, that we got an entire four or five more episodes with Bill slowly working his way back to power, and each one costs the characters something very real. Maybe Waddles gets lost in one episode, and we don't get him back for another few sort of Appa's Lost Days style. Could you imagine how much heavier the stakes would be? And it's not that this show has been trying to talk down to its audience, I don't think it ever really has. Some of the dialogue is a bit kid-oriented, I'll grant you, but for the most part, Gravity Falls is a smart show that respects its audience. 
But as it is, Weird Mageddon is far from my favorite episode of the series. It's not bad by any means. Honestly, I don't think there are any bad episodes of Gravity Falls. But it's not my favorite. You know what is my favorite? Northwest Mansion Mystery! That's everyone's favorite, for good reason. It's got everything. A great A and B plot that are closely linked, a unique bit of Gravity Falls weirdness we haven't seen before, but most importantly, fantastic character development for both Dipper and Pacifica. This was the episode that built properly on what the Gulf War started, a redemption arc for Pacifica, and a surprising amount of chemistry with Dipper. Is what I would be saying if they didn't fucking anything with it! Seriously, I could complain more about Gideon or Robbie or even Wendy having incomplete arcs by the end of the series, but no arc has been more sinful than the utter regression of Pacifica for the finale. And believe me, I get why they did it. I understand, I'm not claiming this to be some writing misstep. Alex Hirsch had no time for a new romantic interest for Dipper with the series wrapping up. And since Dipper was inextricably linked to Pacifica's development, having her revert to her old self for the, like, three lines she has in the finale was the only way to keep her there as one of the members of the Zodiac, which is where I find myself looping back around at the premise of this video. Gravity Falls needed a Season 3. Consider this for a minute. What would the series have actually looked like if a Season 3 had happened? Well, there's no telling, because I am not in charge of the show, but here's my pitch. Everything up until Not What He Seems is the same as it was in the original show, but after that, things change drastically. Tale of Two Stands is now pushed back one episode to do an entirely Ford-centric episode, titled The Stanford Portal Experiment, or alternatively, something much better, that more closely details Ford's time through the portal. This is a unique tool for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a unique episode concept that really is nothing like the rest of the show. It would take on a darker tone and have much to do with Ford desperately searching for a way home while Bill tries to trick him and stalks his mind. It would still have that taste of character-driven storytelling, but significantly decreased humor would set as an excellent start to the midpoint of the series as a whole, signaling increased emotional and narrative stakes. In my perfect world, it would look something like the episode Mavith from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you've never seen that show, go watch it. It's very good. After that, Ford's arc progresses naturally, and Stanley has his turn doing a recap episode, making A Tale of Two Stands a sort of companion piece, both episodes showing their respective pasts and setting up the bitterness between them. But in my version, the actual ford stand feud is slower. It's a more drawn-out quarrel that begins with them on amicable terms as they're genuinely relieved to have each other back. I always thought it was a bit unrealistic how immediately they start fighting. After years and years of not seeing each other, I understand they're supposed to be very stubborn characters, and that's the whole basis for their arc, but at the same time, it's like they were just waiting to yell at each other the moment that Stanford came through the portal. Eventually, though, their experiences have shaped them so much that they don't even recognize each other anymore, and this starts to cast some doubts for the future of Mabel and Dipper, as it does in the original. Let's fast forward a few filler episodes, and the season 2 finale is coming up. Now, to prepare for this, we need to start Gideon's redemption properly. Instead of taking place over the course of one conversation with Dipper, he sinks to new lows to win Mabel's affection and to win back the journals which are now completely in possession of the Pines family. Perhaps he uses that same mind control spell he used on Bud Gleeful during Stanchurian Candidate on Mabel herself. It's during this season finale that the journals get destroyed and Dipper makes the next step in his journey of being an independent person, ridding himself of his crutch. What exactly Gideon does isn't really important, but if it had something to do with the alien spaceship, we could still have that plotline, because that would be very cool, and it would now have significance in the future. At the end of it, the rift is safe, and Gideon is left in the rubble to consider his own actions. Now, it leaves an entire season for a few very important things. First of all, much-needed character development for Ford, Pacifica, Gideon, Mabel, Robbie, Wendy, and McGucket, and a much slower version of Bill opening the portal through trickery and subterfuge. We'd be able to have another sock opera style Bill episode, but this time it'd be Ford focused. Ford would be able to forgive himself for opening the portal in this episode, and Bill would learn about the rift for the first time here. It doesn't have a crack because the alien adhesive is no longer needed for this plot, but it is still a ticking time bomb. It's a critique that's often leveled at the show that Mabel shows no remorse and suffers no consequences when she hurts other people, so she definitely needs an episode where we can see that she's progressed in that area. Something like Boys Crazy, but with Mabel being the voice of reason to whatever Dipper's obsession is? We could have an episode about Dipper trying desperately to undo the journal's destruction through magic, time travel, you name it. He constantly ignores the advice of everyone throughout the episode, including Ford, the actual author, and drives himself to the point of exhaustion before Mabel tells him what he needs to hear. He's great without the journals. Something she knows from watching Dipper give up everything time and time again to make her happy. And then, all the pieces are in place. Ford is a mainstay. Dipper and Pacifica's arc has some kind of resolution, Robbie comes out of his shell, McGucket and Ford reconnect, 
Stan and Ford aren't on speaking terms, Dipper has started to write his own journal with Ford's help, and Mabel learns about his apprenticeship and panics, starting Weird Mageddon as usual, sans the journal's destruction. Now, to be clear, this isn't the right way to do it. I don't think I know more than Alex Hirsch. I want to be very, very clear about that, because he is obviously a very talented writer, showrunner, voice actor, and whatever thousand other things he did to make this show a reality. I adore Gravity Falls, and I am 100% fine with it how it is. I mostly wanted to make this video with the intention of showing what could have been. I think that Gravity Falls had unused potential, and when another series comes along, I hope they learn from it and give the show the time and attention it needs. <coughs> Infinity Drain. <coughs> Don't fuck it up now. <coughs> Thanks for listening to me rant at you for a good, what was this, I don't know, 15 minutes? Jesus Christ. Wow. I'm sorry. I didn't think this would take this long. It was a very simple concept. Uh, check out the other videos that I've made. They're pretty stupid. Uh, I like them. Some of them. Some of them I don't like. I deleted those. So you can't look at them anymore. Well, you can have an episode about Disbird. <laughs> Disbird. That's a new one. It's because I was about to say desperate. That's the... <laughs> Finding out what Bill's plan was, how the little clues sprinkled throughout the series... Hmm. Should grab some water. Is there any in here? There is. I was old. I probably shouldn't have drunk that. <clears throat> I should have done the vocal warm-ups. Big black bear, brown blue blood. That's not it. I got it wrong. Bagel, I got it wrong. Thanks, Bagel.